Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus, this little phone right here. Now, this is part of Samsung's flagship range for 2023, and look, I'm kind of torn about this phone because I really do like the idea of product differentiation. There is no one phone that is going to suit absolutely everyone, whether that's for budget reasons, size reasons, or just plain taste. So you've got that, and this forms part of that Galaxy S23 family. As I said, the S23 is the smaller model. The S23 Ultra is the bigger model. This is the middle child, and I sort of like that it exists, but you often end up in this situation where you have phones that in their own right are actually quite nice devices, quite good devices, but they're kind of hard to recommend, and that's my problem with the S23+. Plus. There's very little that it does that's really wrong, but it's a hard phone to recommend. Even now, a couple of months after it's launched, when we've started to see the first real price drops for this phone, it's still a bit of a tough one to recommend. Let me explain what I mean by that, by going through the phone, by explaining what it does well, and then getting to why I think actually in that S23 family, this probably isn't the phone that most people should buy. So in design terms, the S23 rocks a 6.6-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display, supports your nice dynamic refresh rate, so from 1 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. It'll handle that itself. That's very much Samsung's way for this kind of thing. And yeah, that sits within the family size because the S23 is a 6.1 inch, quite a bit smaller. The S23 Ultra is only a little bit bigger at 6.8 inch. And look, that could make this a good phone for your choice, especially if you like flatter screens. The big difference, I would say, between this, besides that smaller size difference between this and the S23 Ultra, is the fact that this has a flat display where the S23 Ultra is curved. I've got to say, in my own reviewing, that didn't really feel like such a huge difference, but I do know that there are people for whom that is a really important factor. Here in Australia, the S23 Plus sells in cream, which is what I've got, phantom black, green or lavender through just about everyone, as well as graphite or lime, but if you want those colours, you've got to go through Samsung itself. I broadly quite like the design. I mean, it fits within Samsung's design language, so you get that kind of quite familiar, because it was on the S22 as well, uh, triple lens rounded thing going on. That's quite nice. It works quite well. The body feels good. I will say this, the back, or at least the cream back that I've got, doesn't seem to attract fingerprints quite as much as many other phones. That could just be a color thing, of course. It could still be kind of grimy, and it's just that they usually send me black phones, and those, of course, always look the worst the fastest. Moving right along, let's talk about the camera. So at the back, you get a 50 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 10 megapixel telephoto lens, while the front gives you a 12 megapixel front facing camera. Now, that's an okay recipe, but I am struck by the fact that the S23 Ultra, if you want camera, if you want Samsung, that is the phone to go for. Yes, Samsung did have that whole business with moon photos and how they were using AI to somewhat enhance just those. But look, the S23 Ultra is just a really, really good, very capable Android camera phone. And this is just a little bit less. I'm not saying it's a bad camera. You can get some quite decent results out of it. I'll show a lot of those right now. But it's just not quite as good for only a small amount less. And this is going to be a theme throughout this review, by the way. So, for example, if we look at Zoom, I went down to Sydney's Darling Harbour and shot a bunch of photos with a very distinct target in mind. Here's the ultra wide shot that I took, and it's fine. And if we move right along to that primary wide lens, yeah, it's pretty good too. The default three times optical zoom, of course, perfectly fine because it absolutely should be. And you then get into hybrid zoom or what Samsung quite often calls space zoom because they like silly names. And look, 10 times space zoom, yeah, that works okay. That's, that's quite workable, but as soon as you start pushing it up into, say, 20 times zoom, or especially 30 times zoom, which is its maximum, you really do start to see the problems emerge. And look, to be fair, the same thing happens with the S23 Ultra, although it goes up to 100 times space zoom, and that's even sillier, really. I mean, you can get indicative stuff, but it's nothing that I'd really want to use. And look, overall, nice performer, but there's a better one, and but there's a better one is a bit of a problem. Equally, though, the S23 is basically the same camera setup. And that, to me, is a bigger problem as well, because the S23 is even cheaper. And in being a bit smaller, might make a better camera phone for you, because it's a little bit easier to hold. 
I do find those smaller phones, if they've got good cameras in them, are much more pleasant to use over time because you're just not grappling with such a large device. What about power? Well, so the S23 Plus, like its siblings, is using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. We are removed from the days when the Galaxy S phones here in Australia all got Exynos processors. We now get the premium Qualcomm. And look, at the time they launched it, it was the only thing that had the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 here in Australia. All the variants sold in Australia come with 8 gig of RAM and either 256 gig or 512 gig of storage. No micro SD card expansion, would have liked to see it, but Samsung just doesn't play that way anymore. This phone benchmarks and runs pretty much just the same as the Ultra or the regular S23, and you'd pretty much expect that. So benchmarks are fairly similar. Actual in-app performance is pretty similar. This will run it pretty much everything, but most premium phones will. I mean, if you really care about those benchmark numbers, yes, Apple's iPhones are still ruling the roost when it comes to those. If you care about usability, and that's what you should care about, then look, this is fine. It absolutely works. It's very fast. It should be for the money. Samsung's long had its own take on what Android should look like. It's, it's one UI launcher. And look, I personally prefer plain Android. That's just my style. One UI is fine, though, and it's pretty easy to learn. It's got some nice little tricks sitting in there. It works pretty well, and Samsung keeps it updated fairly regularly. They've gotten a lot better about that in recent times. In terms of network connectivity, this is a 5G phone, but here in Australia, or at least the models sold officially in Australia, are sub-6 only. There's no millimeter wave. And so far, we've really only seen that out of Google. I wish Samsung had taken that leap this year. Maybe they will next year. What about battery? Well, the S23 Plus is smaller, of course, than the S23 Ultra, and that means there's less space for battery capacity. So this is packing a 4,700 milliamp hour battery, and that's a bit smaller than you see in a lot of Android phones right now. 5,000 is rapidly becoming the norm, but this is one of those phones that kind of proves that battery numbers aren't the be-all and end-all when you're actually looking at battery life, because this thing runs really, really well. And look, to put that to the test, I ran my standard YouTube test where I basically run a 1080p YouTube video, maximum brightness, moderate volume, highest possible resolution. In this case, it's dynamic, but I do what I can for an hour from 100% to see where it gets to. And the thing with the S23 Plus is it did better than the S23 Ultra. Uh, it still had 96% of its battery left after an hour. And look, that's not a linear relationship. It's not just going to drain down that way. And obviously, the apps that you use will affect its battery life. But the battery life on this is really very good. It's, it's one of the clear highlights for this particular phone over its bigger sibling and over a lot of phones, although not every phone out there that you could buy at this price point. In terms of charging, it's USB-C, and there are some important differentiations here between the Plus and, in fact, the regular S23. So off a wired charge, you can get up to 45 watts with a charger you bring yourself, nothing in the box. That's a sadly all too standard for premium phones these days. If you buy the regular S23, that'll only do up to 25 watts. And on wireless charging, up to 15 watts if you're using Samsung's chargers, or 10 watts through a third-party Qi charger. That's on the slower side for a flagship phone, really, especially when you consider what mobs like Oppo are doing with some of their super-fast wireless charging solutions. So, so far, you've probably heard me say a bunch of positive stuff about this phone, and look, the reality is, in a lot of ways, this is a very good, very capable phone. For the money, it totally should be. But still, I find it a really hard one to recommend, and here's why. So the price on these things has dropped since launch, and that's great, but the price on the S23 and the S23 Ultra has pretty much dropped in line with them. So that point of differentiation, that pricing differentiation, is still very much there. And the issue is, if you're on a tighter budget, you still wanted a premium phone, the S23 will do nearly everything this can do. Yes, it's a smaller screen. Yes, it's got slightly slower charging, but for a much lower price. I'd opt for that if you're thinking budget. But realistically, in this premium space, in this space where phones cost more than a grand, you're not really thinking budget at all, are you? I don't think a lot of people are. And if I'm not thinking budget, then I want to get the best I can get. And that's the S23 Ultra. That's not this phone. I think this phone sits in that awkward position where... There's not a whole lot that's demonstrably hugely wrong with it. It's just that you can fairly easily get better. And if you shop around, you may, of course, be able to find an S23 Ultra at an embarrassingly close price to the regular price of this. I've certainly been able to do that during my review period with just a little bit of online searching around. 
So my advice would basically be, look, if you like your Samsung phones, and that's fine because they make some really, really nice hardware, opt for the Ultra, opt for the S23. The Plus, I think, is a little bit of a harder sell. Anyway, that's my take on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Got any thoughts, any opinions you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.